photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Um, you see my um, Google slide set and the Google slide set actually is supposed to hang on, show you the link, how you can get to this exact slide shed. Uh, obviously through the video, I can't um, give you the um, give you an actual link, but it's kind of a pain to have to type this in, but that's what we got for the moment. Um, but what I want to do with you is kind of walk you through photosynthesis and cellular respiration and kind of look at it from like a big picture kind of view um, so that you can then, as you're going through the book, kind of think about um, what the details are that you may still be needing to fill in. Um, so when you're looking at the overall picture of photosynthesis, and I don't think I can move this if I, no, I cannot. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I was afraid of um, because of that thing right there. I don't know what this is trying to do here. I don't know. Well, we'll figure it out. So let's look at the big, big picture first. And what I'm going to ask you to do here um, as you're reviewing this, and I'm going to go over it with you, obviously. Um, what what you're going to do is um just label the parts right um and so the simple ones hopefully um is that we can say photosynthesis happens in chloroplasts right cellular respiration happens in mitochondria Sunlight energy comes here. Heat energy is lost. ATP. Mm. Don't know. This is ATP. ATP powers most of the cellular work, goes somewhere here. And then the mitochondria produce CO2 and water and photosynthesis in the chloroplast produces organic molecules and oxygen. Now all of these things, maybe with the exception of the ATP, um, you already sort of knew probably before you walked into this class, right? Because you know that plants produce oxygens, um, your trees produce oxygen. Um, you know that you need glucose to survive. That's your fuel. That's your organic molecule fuel. And that you know that you're breathing out CO2. Um, you may not have known anything about the water. Um, your body heat, that's the heat energy that's lost. Um, what cellular respiration in mitochondria is. Those are the details we're going to be talking about and what photosynthesis is. Those are the details that we're going to be talking about. Um, and I guess we should probably put the cellular race in mitochondria over here, uh, wherever it goes. On this side, anyway. Um, all right. So that's part one of the big picture. Now, the other part of the big picture is the fact that um, all the reactions, the big, the big picture reactions in photosynthesis and cellular respiration are oxidation reduction reactions. One of the hardest thing to remember in, um, in biology is which one is the oxidation, which one is the reduction. Um, the term that I tell my students to remember is the term oil rig. 
oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So uh, I always have to go back to oxygen. So oxygen, um, the where, where it is at the periodic table, um, shows that oxygen has six electrons on the outer shell and it only needs two. It's very electronegative. That means it grabs electrons from just about anywhere it can. So if you have an oxygen um, and it grabs electrons from something else, the thing that loses the electron is said to be oxidized because oxygen oxidizes things, right? So the oxidation of something means that they lose some electrons to um, oxygen. So oxidation is loss. Then the oxygen itself, it gains electrons, but it is said to be reduced. There's historical reasons um, why it's called reduced, and it actually literally has to do um, with the weight of the iron ore. Um, but that's one of the things that makes uh, makes it you know complicated to try to figure out um, what's going on here. Um, so, and oxidation reduction reactions. That's the other part that you always have to remember. Is oxidation react reduction reactions are coupled, and oxidation reda reaction is coupled with a reduction reaction, and the other way around. Um, so if you have an oxygen here. And oxygen will grab electrons from just about anywhere. So the oxygen becomes reduced to water. And then by exclusion, the carbon here, the, the um, glucose, becomes oxidized to CO2. Um, once you have worked this out, then you can work this out. So if oxygen is reduced to water, then water is oxidized to oxygen and CO2 is reduced to uh, glucose. So those are the, uh, those are the equations. So this becomes oxidized because it loses two electrons and loss of two electrons when it comes to um, when it comes to reaction that happened in an aqueous environment, then a loss of an electron usually is the same thing as the loss of a proton. So usually wherever the electrons goes is where the protons go too. Now let's see if we can figure out what goes on in a um, in a chloroplast. So this is a chloroplast um, and you should have seen this picture before. And so the question is now, can you label this picture? Can you figure out what goes where? Um, and I'm not actually going to do this for you, but um, you can, you know, um, think about what you know, think about what you don't know. Um, and, and let's see if we can fill this thing in. So I'm going to fill a couple of things in. So you know that this is a chloroplast. Now, some of the things you can look at the, uh, at the symbols, right? So this here too, there's probably going to be something somewhere about light or something like that. And there is light right there. Now, some of these symbols also look like the thing that they are. Like this bubble right here probably is water. This down here probably is the symbol for sugar. And now you get to think through this. You get to think through which one's the Kelvin cycle, where does the CO2 come in? Um, and think about think about what you know about photosynthesis, right? Um, so look over here. You already know about photosynthesis that um, photosynthesis, this one. Um, 
you already know that what happens in photosynthesis is that the input things are carbon dioxide and water and output is sugar and oxygen. So if input is carbon dioxide and water, well, if you've got water here, then what do you think that is going to be? Um, and then this one we've seen before, right? We've labeled this before because those labels are always the same. So you've labeled this before over here. So, so you know to label this one. Um, and let's see if you can get all the way through. Once you've done that, um, you can review this one over here. And similarly, right, the little starburst thing, we already know what the little starburst thing is. Um, but let's see, can we figure out any of the other things? Um, glucose is not labeled as glucose this time. It's not, it doesn't have a symbol this time around, but um, those symbols are the same. So this down here is your water again. Where's your water? There's your water right there. Um, and the water is, um, comes from what, um, what atom um, that converts is converted into water. Um, so you can set these up and if you if you have any questions, if you can't figure out one of them, um, go back to the book um, and look at the pictures again and work through um, why this is uh, where this is happening. This here is happening in the mitochondrium um, and it, this process is called oxidative phosphorylation. Um, and this, oh, it doesn't say anywhere that it's the phos, uh, so the, the whole process is oxidative phosphorylation. Um, but, uh, the, this part here, that really is where oxidative phosphorylation goes in the picture. Um, and then here, um, these are really the two key, key pictures I want you to look at. So this is, um, photosynthesis. Um, and photosynthesis here, again, I want you to label these things, but the big picture that's happening there is you start out with the water, um, and there are two electrons that are stolen from the water. These electrons are, uh, they, they, there's this photosystem, uh, where these electrons are, um, put into a higher, um, energy level with the help of a, um, light. Um, and then as they pass through the electron transport chain, um, what happens is um, there are um, protons uh, that are being pumped into the inside of this membrane. So as these electrons are being pumped through there, protons are being from the outside pumped into the membrane, um, into the in inside of the membrane. Um, and what you see inside of there, what happens inside of there, there is a basically an overabundance of protons. And because there's an overabundance of protons, those protons would like to leave. Um, and there's only one place for them to leave because this is a semi-permeable membrane and the semi-permeable membrane um, does not have um, any way for protons to go through. And so the only place that the protons can get, go through is through this thing here, the ATP synthase. Um, and when they go through there, what they do is they literally spin um, a turbine. Uh, they come in there and they spin this molecule around as if it were a turbine. And that, that movement, um, it's the conversion of the energy. So the, the, um, the driving force behind the energy um, is the concentration gradient because these molecules uh, want to get out of there. These, these protons want to get out of there. Um, and this driving force that they want to get out of there turns this turbine, um, which then in chain in turn um, turns ADP into ATP. Um, this here is the picture in uh, the chloroplast. And we oftentimes think of chloroplast and cellular respiration as opposites, but they're actually not. They're both energy conversions and they actually both convert energy. Um, they have a different starting energy, but they both actually convert energy into ATP. Um, 
photosynthesis does something different with the ATP at that moment in time. So the first step in photosynthesis is to capture the energy in the ATP. So the energy from sunlight in photosynthesis is captured in ATP and then passed on to, to the Kelvin cycle, where that same energy that is now in ATP that then gets stored in an organic compound, sugar. Contrast that, compare, contrast that to the um, mitochondrium, where the overall reaction is a very similar reaction in that there's also a process um, where uh, in the electron transport chain, um, there is a, um, there's an electron transport chain set up with um, oxygen as the final elect electron acceptor, which is turned into water over here. Um, and they set up a um, concentration gradient, which also allows only um, the um, protons to get out only at the ATP synthase. Um, and then there's the production of ATP. And then ATP just is utilized for, um, for physiological processes. So in, in, the, um, in the cell, we utilize the organic molecule that comes in, um, break it down to the point that it can be utilized um, for um, just the, the, um, the, the driving of the, um, of the um, ATP synthase. Um, and in um, photosynthesis, that's just the first part of the step. But the... Um, the, the, the parts that are involved in there are remarkably similar, really. Um, and that's really the take home for me, but use this as a way to review your, um, review what you've learned.